Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, and what's on tap for today? Well, we've got a video reaction, folks, to an interview that was being done with Phoebe Plummer. Now, Phoebe Plummer is one of the girls who threw the tomato soup on the Van Gogh painting and then took, I guess, um, some type of a glue or whatever and, you know, glued their hands to the wall so they couldn't be taken away, but they obviously were. So her name is Phoebe Plummer. She's being interviewed by a gentleman by the name of Jacob Reese Moog, who I hope I pronounced correctly. And Phoebe is part of what I consider a terrorist, a domestic terrorist organization called Just Stop Oils. Folks, it's a great interview. Our reaction is to it. Let's get to it right now. But I'm really delighted to be joined by Just Stop Oil spokesman Phoebe Plummer. Thank you for coming in, because I know you don't agree with me. Um, how do you square the circle that people want to be more prosperous, they want to lead comfortable lives, but you're saying it's absolutely urgent we stop emissions now? How do you make the two work? Hi, Jacob. Thank you so much for having me on. As you say, I'm Phoebe. I'm 21, and I'm a student from London and a supporter of Just Stop Oil. And I wonder why you think it's incompatible to help people with the cost of living crisis and to switch to renewables, which are nine times cheaper than fossil fuels. Can you name me one of your viewers who is suffering the consequences of the cost of living crisis, who doesn't want their energy bills to be nine times cheaper right now? Well, unfortunately, that's not what's happening um, because the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow and you need to have fossil fuel back up to make up the gap. About half our energy every day is still coming from natural gas. Where's that going to come from? Well, why aren't we implementing renewable technology? The largest solar farm in the UK was built in six weeks. But it's not it, going takes, to... it takes up to 28 years for any oil to come out of the ground in the North Sea. But it's not going to produce any energy at night. That's the problem with renewables, is that they don't provide the base load that you need. We already have the capacity to, to provide so much of our energy from renewables without any... any this girl, okay, is now part of my... Hall of Shame, which is part of SIMR, the acronym that I coined, S-I-M-R. Stupid, idiotic, moronic, retarded. Sometimes we have to use these, it's hyperbole, because there's nothing else that can actually show and to demonstrate where these people are. I mean, first, first of all, Social Justice Warrior written all over, Virtue Signaling all over the place, woke completely. As she is 21 years old, she's a spokesperson, a spokeswoman, I'm going to say. She's a woman and she's speaking, so she's a spokeswoman for the domestic terrorist organization I consider Just Stop Oils. And she's basically saying, use technology, you know? We already can do it. We can lower the gas. We can lower the energy prices nine times lower just by using wind and solar. Folks, it isn't cheap enough yet. And that's exactly what Jacob is basically trying to get across to this idiot. And I just want to know, all these clothes that she's wearing, um, oh, I wonder how the dye that's in her hair, right? Where do you think that's coming from? Oil byproducts. I mean, you know, be the first to speak, you hypocrite. Technology needed for, for, for storage solutions. But where is this coming from? Because when the wind doesn't blow, when we had really cold days, we were reliant on importing from the EU, on coal and on gas. How are we going to replace that in the short term? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. What I am doing is listening. That's right. You're not a scientist and you're listening to other idiot scientists who really aren't scientists. They're just idiots. Listening to what all the experts are saying. We're living in this insane world where the experts aren't being listened to. The United Nations has called for no more oil and gas. The International Energy Agency has said we can have no new oil and gas. The IPCC report, the largest global report on the climate crisis, have all said we can have no new oil and gas. How many more experts need to say it? Because we can't do it tomorrow. What are we going to do in terms of transport? 
that we still need petrol for cars and we need diesel for lorries. How are we going to get goods into supermarkets without this? Quite frankly, I'm not a scientist. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the world and we're living the, re- the effects of the climate crisis. What you're actually doing is, okay, you're just a young, stupid, millennial, Zen X or whatever you want to call it, and virtue signaling. You have absolutely no freaking idea. After you leave this here, this studio, what are you going to do? You're going to get back right away. You're going to get on your energy-driven phone. You're going to get into a cab or a taxi or your car. You're going to go to your home or your apartment. You're going to turn on the lights. You're going to turn on the electricity. You're going to turn on the heat. You're going to turn on the air conditioning, whatever you need. You're going to open up your refrigerator. You're going to take out some ice cubes. You're going to take out some Coca-Cola or soda or whatever, which is in a plastic bottle, a byproduct, okay, of oil. And you're going to use all sorts of things that are that some of their baseline products, if you go back to the derivatives, are coming from fossil fuels. That's what you're going to do. But you're going to come on a show like this and you're going to virtue signal all day freaking long. Today, right now, people are dying. Children are starving. Well, Families are fleeing their homes. But energy... Is, and it's preventable. Energy, we have the solution. Cheap energy is one of the things that has hugely extended life expectancy by the ability to control temperatures, whether this is by air conditioning or by heating, the ability to store food more effectively, the ability to transport food, and indeed use fertilisers to grow more food, has all been essential in increasing life expectancy. Taking all that away would be disastrous for life expectancy. Do you know what's essential in keeping our food supply? Tackling the climate crisis. This year we lost a third of our wheat crops, half of our potato crops, and it's only going to get worse. We're heading to a future where people are going to be fighting over the last loaves of bread at Lidl? But the only way we get our wheat crop is by putting the fertilizers on that come from fossil fuels. How are we going to replace that? That the productivity of organic farming is so much lower than of modern farming methods. We cannot feed the world on organic farming. And you must know that. How do you expect to feed the world when our crops are destroyed by droughts, floods, wildfires, storms? You've always had... Um, weather events that have affected crops, but that actually using fossil fuels for fertilizers and moving on to genetic modification of crops has enormously increased the yield. That since Malthus rate, we've increased agricultural productivity by about 2% per annum. And this is what is allowing people uh, to get extended life expectancy because they've got more certainty of food. And this all depends on cheap energy, which has come from fossil fuels. Jacob, you have six children? Do you not care about their future? Do you not care about them being able to feed themselves? Because right now, under this government's policies, your six children are heading towards a future that is filled with life-threatening extreme weather events, crop failures, famine, war. For 20, 21 years old, to be in this kind of fear, to be talking with this kind of stupidity, with this kind of virtue signal, with this kind of wokeness, saying, oh, Jacob, you got six children. Don't you care about your kids? You're not going to be able to eat. You're going to starve them. They're going to be just like those kids in Africa that don't have any food. What are you going to do, Jacob? Your, your kids are just going to perish. Jacob, please don't let your kids perish. Don't do that. Give them the chance to have food. Get rid of all the energy, get rid of all the oil, get rid of all the fertilizer. Then your kids will survive and have a better future. Suffering on a scale completely unimaginable. I, I think you've taken the evidence for an evolving climate and then applied it in an extraordinarily extreme way and are forgetting about the enormous advantages. I can't advantages. believe you're talking to me about an evolving climate. Well, the climate people is People are dying. But uh, this is Do you a know statement. how many people are uh, suffering uh, around the world? What evidence is there that this is because we're using fossil fuels, that the climate evolves, but more people die each year from cold than from heat, as Have you Have know. you read the IPCC report? What do it. you mean, what science? Well, but in terms, you're making extreme claims, but you're suggesting by not using fossil fuels, we would not produce the food we need to feed the world population. I'm suggesting that that if we keep on heading down this genocidal path of mass destruction, then no, there... This genocidal path of mass destruction. This genocidal path of mass destruction.
won't be any foods in the supermarket. But, then we will see vast waves of the world uninhabitable. But, we will see mass displacement of people. But if you took out fossil fuels tomorrow, you would simply not have the productivity of agriculture you ha need to feed eight or nine billion people. And that would be tomorrow. And I'm not saying you shouldn't reduce emissions, I'm not arguing that. I'm simply saying you must do it when you have the technology to replace the energy that you're using. Because otherwise, all the consequences you're arguing for will happen immediately. We will simply not have the food we need to feed the population of the world. Jacob, you know we're not asking for the taps to be turned off tomorrow. All of you know that. We're asking for an end to all new fossil fuel licenses. In line with what climate scientists around the world are saying. But if you turn it off for new licenses now, you're requiring a change that is going to happen before we have the technology in place to substitute for it. So you may be delaying it by a few years, but this has to be a rational process to do it once you've got the technology sorted out, and we haven't got the technology yet. So I understand you're, you're an economics man. Yes. So well, I'm interested in economics. Yeah. So I've done some some maths for you. I hope you don't mind. I looked up your net worth online. It's quite easy to find. It's, well, it's not actually true. But it's easy to find, but it's in not the actually true. Of millions, but that's not. It uh, costs around twenty thousand pounds to insulate a British home. So that's eight thousand British homes for your one hundred and fifty net million, I, which is what uh, it says online. Well, which is untrue. But do you um, really think that you're worth you, more but, than eight thousand cold, freezing but have you, families? Have you, have you seen the studies on insulation? That insulation. Do you care about the people I, living I, in fuel but, poverty? Um, very much so. When I was Secretary of State for Energy, I was responsible for developing the plan that has brought energy prices down for families. That was policy that I was intimately involved in designing. So, of course, I care about that. So, you do but, understand. But wow, did he just give her a couple of slap olas across the cheek olas, right? He just put her in her place. He just mansplained to this child, basically. She's 2021, folks. We have to give some break to these children, these five, six, seven, eight-year-old petulant millennials, these woke virtue signaling climate activists, these zealots. And she just basically said, oh, your net worth, Jacob, is like $150 million. I did the math for you. I did the math. You're economics, man. I, I can do some economics. I hope you understand my numbers. And Jacob's going, you can find it, but that doesn't mean that it's true. Do you know that your net worth could make 8,000 homes? We could insulate them? Do you feel that your worth more than 8,000 British homes? This is the virtue signaling that is coming out the verbal diarrhea which emanates from these children, folks, from these children. You know, they say the um, human brain is not developed really until 26 or 27. This is proof positive that that is true. In her case, it'll never be fully developed. These, these, they're gone, folks. They are completely gone. They have been taken in by the cult of climatology. The report that you're asking but me about I'm, says that the cost I'm, of insulating British yes, homes is but, so expensive because you, of the government's and, failure and you know, to insulate British homes. But what happens three years after people have insulated their homes? They use the same amount of energy as they did before. There's been a study on this, which I'm sure you've seen reports on. In the first year, they save money. In the second year, they save a small amount of money. In the third year, they have actually made themselves warmer because um, the economics of it is they have a certain amount they can spend on what energy. What happens when the government fails to insulate British homes? 7.5 million there's, British there's, people live in fuel there is poverty. A big Parents are starving themselves so that they can there feed a, that, their children, and people are freezing to death in their homes because they are forced to is, choose between heating this, this is, and eating. But this is people are not dying. This are you is, hearing me? Because it's simply not true. The government introduced a cap on energy prices and support for families who couldn't afford energy prices. That those were brought in last year, and they are very significant. What do you mean it's ensure... not true? Have you spoken to an ordinary well, person who is suffering the cost? Well, living crisis I, I, don't, right now. I don't believe there's any such thing as ordinary people. I believe everybody is in their individual way quite remarkable. I think ordinary people is the most condescending way of referring to our fellow British citizens. Well, oh, nice. He just gave her a couple more slap olas on her fat cheek olas. <laughs> ordinary people, ordinary people. I don't use the word ordinary people because I think everybody's extraordinary. They are great people. And I think it's just foolish and it's very terrible of you to use the term ordinary people to describe British citizens. How dare you? Hey, Jacob, baby. <laughs> sir, baby. <laughs> love it. Love it, sir. I love it.
<laughs> she knows she's just been smack it a couple of times. Of course you don't relate to the ordinary people. You're a millionaire. Um, the figures, my personal circumstances have nothing to do with whether we impoverish people by making energy prices higher. And you want to make them higher, and I don't. But what I'd say to you finally is why don't you stand for election? Why do you think it is right to throw soup over a picture rather than standing election and seeing if you can get people to vote for your view of the world? You're an educated man, Jacob. You know that this is how successful movements of social change happen. They must cause disruption. And Antonio I, Guterres, he's, the, he's the Secretary the, General of the United Nations, he has said that the, we are on a highway to climate the, hell. He has said way, that licensing new fossil fuels is economic and moral madness. The Secretary General yes, of the United Nations is calling Why for they, an end. These kids are globalists. Who gives a crap? Who gives a freaking crap whether or not the United Nations wants something or the IPCC or any other government bureauc bureaucratic institution? We don't want those morons, those idiots, those retards, those stupid institutions. We don't want them dictating freaking policy to us because every time they do, it causes unbelievable and in many cases irreparable harm to the human beings that they have feelings that they feel think that they possibly might work and it never ever freaking does but yet these millennials these young petulant children fall for the trap because their minds aren't developed and you can fill them with all kinds of stupidity and mush between these ears to why, all new fossil fuels. Why don't you what stand, makes you think why that I have time to get into power and make these changes? So you want to be a dictator? You don't want voters to decide? That's you want absolutely to tell not them. what I said and you Why don't that. you stand for election? Put yourself forward and see if people want your way. Because we don't have right. time. Because so if you, I want to have a future, so if I want to have a have future tell, where I can feed myself, where I can love my we're not, family, we're not going to feed them. Have, we're not going to feed them without fossil fuels, which are the essential fertilizers. We Thank need you to make the change now. Unbelievable. This girl here is just absolutely. Yeah, I thought Greta Thunberg, you know, she's part of my hall of shame. She's part of Simmer, stupid, idiotic, moronic, retarded. <laughs> I have a feeling, okay, that Phoebe, the idiot plumber, I think somebody ought to be checking her pipes, man, because. <laughs> There's some leaks going on in her pipes, boy, let me tell you. There's a major leakage going on here. It was just unbelievable. I mean, these kids, they just take this stuff in and they, it's this freaking gospel. And you know, it is, folks. It is a religion. It is an eschatology that is going on here. There is there is a sin of using fossil fuels, the sin of using coal, the sin of using natural gas, the sin of using anything that they don't deem, um, you know, that's coming from solar or wind. And then to redeem yourself, you have to basically, you know, get, get carbon credits. You've got to uh, kneel before, you know, the the cross of, of, um, of energy you know, independence. I mean, it's just, they take this stuff and they just completely, you know, emit it. I mean, the verbal diarrhea that comes from these kids and, and these leaders is absolutely unbelievable. It is stunning. It is, hor I think it's horrific. I think it is scary to know that this could be the future of some leaders in some leadership roles that would be, you know, leftist, socialist, Marxist. I mean, this is very scary stuff. And you're going to have other kids and other children. They're going to listen to the garbage and the stupidity and the idiocy, the asininity, the moronicity, the retardedness of these kids spewing this verbal diarrhea that has absolutely zero fact base whatsoever, nothing at all unbelievable. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think. 
My final thought is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.